Dear Chess.com viewers, I'm a Grandmaster Alexander Delchev and we'll continue in this video to analyze the Scotch game and more precisely a black move knight f6. After the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, e take d4, knight d4, uh, black plays knight f6 which is considered as a very good choice and it's played by many respectable positional players like uh, Karpov, Kramnik, Aronian and of course many others. Black is attacking the pawn on e4 and has a flexible choice, keeping his choice about the development of the bishop on f8. So now if white goes knight to c3, black will have options to pin the knight with bishop b4. So my advice is to avoid this line and always when uh, black has the possibility to play bishop to b4, avoid avoiding to play knight c3. Here, uh, a very important a key move here is knight take, knight take c6. With this move uh, starting the Mises variation, one of the most enigmatic and sharp lines in the whole Scotch game. After b takes c6, as I said, the d takes c6 is, is not a good uh, choice. And after queen to d8, king to d8, black king will remain in the center, and white, of course, has a superior pawn structure, which is quite enough uh, advantage for uh, to achieve for, for white. So after b takes c6, now the key move is to play e5. It's a very typical idea we saw in uh, some other games. So chasing the knight, white is winning a tempo and taking a space. The white pawn e5 is cramping the back position. So here, if uh, black is not well prepared, they can play knight d5, which seems a very natural move, but actually it's a, a small opening mistake, which leads to disadvantage for black after c4, knight to b6, white goes a natural, natural knight to c3. And here black has some difficulties with uh, completing his kingside development, as if they play bishop to b4, then white has a very unpleasant and also typical move with the pawn e5, attacking g7, and black doesn't have a comfortable defense, as the castle short will follow bishop to h6, and white is winning uh, material. So, after e5, a uh, very important move here is queen to e7. Pinning the pawn is forcing white to play queen to e2, and only now black goes knight to d5. And now white continue with the same idea, c4. Chasing the knight is very important, as gives a, give back the natural square c3 for the knight. Uh, black generally has two moves, as uh, black develops another piece, pinning the pawn, uh, c4, and preparing to castle long. If, you're, if you think logically, white is uh, probably in a big danger, as um, black is uh, making a, a logical uh, developing moves, and white should play only with the pawns, and they're much behind in development. But from the, from the other point of view, after the move b3, black bishop on a6 is um, now harmless, and can stay on a6 for the, until the rest of the game without, without much action. After, let's say, b3, if black wants to take a chance and to continue with the castle long, it's actually a very risky approach as black king on c8 is uh, very uncomfortable as the b-file is, uh, is open. Now white continues with a very, another very important move, g3, controlling uh, f4 square before playing bishop to b2. Now a typical move can be rook e8, white defend the pawn with bishop b2, and after f6, look like white is going to lose a pawn. But this is the secret of this line. We're, we don't uh, bother about the material advantage. The most important is the piece activity. And after bishop to b2, f takes e5 and castle short, we have another position with opposite side castling where we know that the most important thing is who, be, who deliver first mate, who uh, get to the opponent king first. Now after the most like e4, knight d2, knight to f6, white continues in a very simple way, queen e3, attacking the pawn. And after black defend the pawn with king b8 or king b7, doesn't matter. We continue with the move b4 and opening the file. Opening the b-file is unavoidable. With a very big problem for black and his material advantage is not of any use in this position. Okay, we'll take a look again at this position after bishop a6, b3. We'll take a more deep look in the video about the opening traps because there are a lot of, a lot of tactics. Bishop is, is charged with a lot of tactical ideas. But in this game, which I'm going to show you, is a game from 2017 in one of the open tournaments in Spain. And uh, in this game, black use the more flexible move knight to b6, which is also my preference when I'm playing black pieces. Bishop maybe to b7, maybe to a6. He's also uh, preparing, now preparing a very aggressive, aggressive development with g6 and bishop g7. But let's concentrate on white ideas. Continues with the knight to c3. And then there is a three possible, three possible ways to finish the development. First one is to play bishop to f4 and to castle long, but then uh, white king will be not so comfortable to play it on c1. Uh, this is only um, a very risky possibility, and we can play this only when we don't have other choice. And another move, g3, with the idea to, uh, to complete development by, uh, after knight c3, okay, after knight c3, white uh, can play g3, then bishop to g2, and then castle short, but this is not so easy to achieve. As, uh, okay, first of all, bishop on g2 has nothing to do against the pawn c6, and second, black has the possibility to attack the pawn c4 with the queen e6 or bishop a6. So it seems like uh, white, the most harmonious setup is uh, is to play queen to e4 and then bishop to d3. Then bishop and the queen are uh, building a battery on the diagonal against h7, uh, on the diagonal b1, h7, and then uh, keeping the pawn c4 protected uh, by both the queen and the bishop. In this game, black played the move g6, which looks like a very natural continuation as uh, developing the bishop to g7 and then castle short, putting some pressure to the e5 pawn. Looks like a very reasonable way to finish, reasonable way to finish the development. But it appears to be uh, a small opening mistake, which is punished immediately with the move knight to e4. White is threatening knight f6, so black doesn't have much choice. He plays bishop to g7. Now white is sacrificing his central pawn with the move bishop to g5. Of course, it's very risky for black to take the pawn, but let's now, what can white play in this case? What is white best move here? Try to find it. Well, it's a bishop to f6. Of course, it's a very important, very unpleasant move. And of course, black can give a check, queen to a5 to escape from the from the bishop, but then knight to c3, they open a check, open attack, and then followed by queen to e7, and black is losing material. So in this position, after bishop to g5, black plays queen before check, Winning a tempo for uh, to follow to continue with the castle short. White goes queen to d2, changing the, knight, the queens. Queen takes d2, and now king takes d2. Uh, white is threatening to play knight to f6, but now black, it seems like black can take a pawn, bishop to e5. Uh, but this leads to a very unpleasant consequences after knight f6 check. Black doesn't have a, really a choice because a king f8, we have bishop to h6, so you should take the knight then. A very important intermediate move. Rook to e1 check, and after king f8, we take the bishop, 
and okay white has a foul number but a very good compensation after rook g8 the rook and the king are dominated and there is no big chance that they can enter with this piece in the game back uh instead of this black black castle short hoping that this attack is premature and the end game and the end game they can save with exchanging some key pieces but white continue with the knight f6 check black goes king to h8 seems uh that was naively thinking that everything is going fine for them and now how to continue with the attack white has a very typical way to continue his attack can you find it if you need more time you can always pause your video of course white is going h4 the pleasant threat now is to play h5 in all the position when black has a fianchetto this idea with the h pawn uh, attacking with the h pawn opening the h file is just a deadly dangerous for black black plays h6 and here the key move with which white is almost winning maybe not almost maybe directly directly winning is now accepting the bishop sacrifice is just leading to mating three moves bishop h6 now rook to h6 king to g7 rook h7 check king to g6 and then bishop d3 mate and the game finished in a very similar way black took a uh, knight to f6 bishop f6 king h7 and then white takes h takes g6 and bishop to d3 and black soon resigned because there is no way there is no way to stop the sacrifice rook h6 followed by rook h1 mate well this game was also very instructional white uh, punished it in a very um, confident way a small opening mistake of, uh, of his opponent and um, now let me outline the most important things we learned about this line if black goes knight to f6 and a very similar in most of the positions when we have uh, such option we don't play knight to c3 but we immediately take knight to c6 and after b takes c6 we play e5 chasing the knight we don't care that uh, e5 pound is a far advanced we have uh, our pieces well prepared to support it and to uh, claim an opening advantage and also the pound e5 has a very important role in uh, developing the attack on the king side later in the middle game because chasing the defender uh, the knight on f6 we have, a, we have a possibility to build this uh, battery and to deliver mate on the king side thank you for your attention i hope this video was instructional and i look forward to seeing you back Nope. 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 Nope.